Hello, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News on July 31st, which happens to be a Tuesday. Bob Ulrich in studio with me. Hi, Bob. Hi, Gary. How are you today? Oh, I'm good. And by the way, we are encouraged. Why? Because we see the signs uh, in Bible prophecy unfolding one by one by one all over the world, the Middle East, Europe, America. Uh, we see apostasy growing, which was one of the signs of the end times. And uh, prophecy, properly studied, is the most encouraging thing you can engage in. Amen. And that's why we're here today, Bob. I, I wanted to, to read a letter. Uh, this is an email uh, from a, a lady, and I really took this to heart. Uh, she says, please help our families. Our husbands are so consumed with all these uh, end times events. Uh, their own families are falling apart around them. They don't seem to care. Consumed with a steady diet of you, she says. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, they're watching all kinds of prophecy programs. They're reading Bible prophecy. Uh, and they have, are suffering the doomsday effect, I guess. And then she goes on, how do we offer hope to our children to go on living when the end is so near and their dads seem so depressed uh, on what is to come? Now, Bob, that's where I part ways. Wow. Because I study prophecy and I'm not depressed. I never get depressed reading about the Lord's return. In fact, oh. when, we pull, pull, when we pull up the daily headlines, you know, on the internet or in the newspaper or wherever, and you read these things, you know, we don't look at this as the end. We look at this as a new beginning. This, this has all happened before. You know, uh, one of my favorite uh, quotes is from Clement, Clement of Rome in A.D. 97. This is after the death of the Apostle John, and people were beginning to worry that Jesus wasn't coming back. And I'm not going to read the whole letter, of course, but he says at one point, wretched are they who are of a double mind and a doubting heart and, and, and say, who say, these things we have heard even in the times of our fathers. But behold, we have grown old and none of them has happened unto us. Uh, and so there in AD 97, they were already having prophecy burnout, Bob. Well, we see this all the time. I we had do. a conversation with my mother just the other day about this exact thing and her talking about constantly telling people Jesus is coming soon. Hang in there a little bit longer. And people have heard this. And, and the one lady said to her, uh, Dorothy, you've been saying this for the last 25 or 30 years since I've known you that Jesus could come at any moment. Says, you know, I'm just getting tired of hearing it. Well, I'm certainly not getting tired of hearing it. As my mom let me know, she's not getting tired of saying it. She's going to continue to say it because she's watching the signs of the times all around her. She's encouraged. Now, the fact is Jesus could come at any moment. This is the central doctrine of uh, the evangelical church, the doctrine of imminency. That is, he is at the door, as he put it in Revelation. And I really believe he is. He could come in the next 10 minutes, the next 10 hours, the next 10 days. We don't know. But we are to be in a state of watchful waiting, a state of preparedness. And the only way you can remain in that state day in and day out is to expect his imminent return. And that is so important. It's almost an intangible, and yet Bob, to me, is right at the top of the list. Well, the Scripture instructs us very, very clearly that we are to... We to watch. We are to be sober. We are to be looking for the Lord at an any moment imminent return. Uh, this, is, this is a clear directive from the Lord himself to us. Now, what if he doesn't come in your lifetime? Many people that I know have gone on to be with the Lord, and they expected to be taken in the rapture. And they lived full, normal lives, and they went home to be with the Lord. Uh, is that a problem? Not at all, because they lived the quality of their lives while they were alive was so much better because they lived their lives in a state of preparedness, watchful waiting. Don't you find it fascinating how throughout history, I don't want to use the phrase carrot on a stick because that's probably not a good analogy, but how the Lord has always given hope for that generation right. that perhaps this will be the generation that will see the return of the Lord. And you know, when, when Jesus at uh, Jesus' ascension, you know, when he went up in a cloud and two angels sat there, you know, and they, they said the same Jesus will come again 
in like manner, this is our hope that yeah. the Lord is going to return and he's going to take us to heaven for eternity. Now, how can that be depressing? It can't be. And there's even a reward, Bob, promised for those who are watchfully waiting. Uh, there is a crown promised to those who, quote, love his appearing. Now, if you're not looking for his momentary return, you, you don't love his appearing. Uh, and yet, if you do love his appearing, moment by moment by moment, uh, you'll receive a special crown for that. Well, I, I think that's a wonderful uh, thought. Gary, not everybody in the church is excited about studying Bible prophecy. We've kind of learned that the hard way. We don't yeah. understand it. I mean, we could sit here on the set for hours just talking about things going on in the world today and you know where we think things are going to go next and what's going to happen next. But the church as a whole does not share that enthusiasm. Why is that? Well, the church doesn't uh, share that because they have been taught down through the centuries that prophecy as it is presented in the Bible does not really indicate the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ. What it indicates, uh, and they interpret the Bible, of course, uh, in a way that, that supports this view. Uh, what they say is that Christ is uh, waiting in the heavens for the church to repair planet Earth through its own means and motives. There, uh, that is, the, the church is supposed to, to perfect the world, bring in the golden age, and then at that point, Christ will return. And so uh, the the majority of institutional churches simply have adopted what is called the amillennial view, that uh, the there will be no literal millennium, that there will be a golden age brought about by the church, and then Christ will return. Well, we don't believe that at all. We believe in a series of events uh, that, that basically are focused upon the catching away of the church. Well, we're interested in encouraging people. If you're watching today, trust us, Jesus is coming soon. In fact, you know, and the writer of Hebrews, you know, says in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Oh, yeah. I just love that phraseology there as you see the day approaching and we see that day approaching quickly now, don't we? All the signs, war, economic collapse, apostasy, they're all there. We see the day approaching. Uh, have a couple of books uh, that you might be interested in. The King is Coming, uh, and it's all about the rapture by Erwin Lutzer. And this man served for 30 years as pastor at Moody Bible uh, Church. Uh, it Could Happen Tomorrow by Gary Frazier, one of the co-editors of the Tim LaHaye Study Bible. Both these men have written books on the rapture of the church. You can uh, purchase either one for $12.95 or both of them together along with an annual subscription to Prophecy in the News for $49.95. When you call, ask for the King is Coming package and you'll get both books and the magazine for forty nine ninety five. Bob, wish we had more time. Well, all I can say is if you read the news every day, there's plenty to get depressed about if you look at it from a short-sighted perspective. But if you feed your mind and feed your body with the Word of God, with books that are encouraging, with prophecy in the news magazine. I mean, this is why we publish this magazine, to exhort, to encourage, Absolutely. to let people know that Jesus is coming soon. We believe it. He could come any moment, so keep looking up. <laughs> <laughs>